Hello, everyone, and welcome to Volume 6 of Nucleus Shortcuts. If you missed earlier episodes, not to worry. You can find them in our blog at nucleussec.com and on our YouTube channel. I'm your host, Adam Dudley, and today's topic is demystifying the Nucleus API. And I'm a marketer, so I use the word demystify because it's cool. So um, the other day I told Aaron, uh, who is my guest today and lead solutions engineer here at Nucleus, that I felt I needed a walkthrough of the Nucleus API because I'd never done a deep dive on it. So Aaron works a lot with the Nucleus API when he's onboarding new customers, especially enterprise customers, really helping them to level up their programs, using the API to integrate with existing systems and workflows for managing vulnerabilities. So Aaron being the good guy that he is, he was kind enough to oblige and uh, he gave me a demo and I felt very enlightened. So uh, we ended up with a great training video for the rest of the team here. And then I thought to myself, hey, you know, I bet the raving fans of uh, Shortcuts would love this, which brings us to this moment. So uh, Aaron, would you like to introduce yourself briefly since this is your first time on the show? Yeah, yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm Aaron Antsberger, Solution Engineer at Nucleus. i uh, been with the company since around March of this year. So 2021 this year, um, came from the API integration and security space at uh, MuleSoft, uh, was part of our security specialist team and uh, was excited to get more into the security field. And so uh, ended up joining Nucleus back in March. It's been a great ride since. Fantastic. Well, it's great to have you here, Aaron. And so for the folks watching at home, would you mind giving a brief overview of why the Nucleus API is important to uh, the work of managing vulnerabilities at scale? And more specifically, uh, why should they care about it? Yeah. So the uh, API is essentially an open REST API, which Nucleus has built to expose the platform programmatically. Um, it's fully Swagger documented. Um, extremely easy to consume. I've consumed a lot of APIs in my day. Um, and it really allows you to begin extending your work on the platform. Um, so really any capability that you can do within the platform, you can do through the API. Uh, and so that unlocks capabilities like, you know, custom file ingestion or, you know, building integrations that might not exist today, right? If you're using a custom or homegrown system, uh, or if uh, for some reason we don't have a connector built yet, um, you're able to get data into Nucleus. It also exposes out uh, data from Nucleus. So if you're using you know, centralized dashboarding or reporting, you can also export data easily through the API. Um, I should also mention that our API isn't rate limit or throttled. It comes with your subscription with Nucleus. Uh, so as a Nucleus customer, you have unfettered access to your own data. It is your data after all. Yeah, that's great. And I'll, I'll mention that I know that uh, other platforms in this category of tool do not necessarily allow for that kind of access to your data. Um, so I, I do know that. And I'll also mention that as far, extend, as, far as using the API to extend capabilities, um, something I don't think we talked about uh, in the prep for this show is that uh, we do have a public GitHub uh, community where people are uh, customers and and here in house our our, uh, our subject matter experts are developing and and posting um, custom tools to leverage the the API. So thought I should mention that. Um, you know, so so for the folks. Uh, that might be new to the show, you know, at its core, Nucleus is an aggregation automate, uh, aggregation prioritization automation platform for rapidly managing vulnerabilities at scale from a single environment. And so it aggregates vuln and asset data from all the various tools in the organization. This can be in the dozens, uh, as we found at, at many large enterprises. Uh, it correlates, deduplicates, enriches uh, everything and centralizes it in one place. So one of the great things about Nucleus is that it's really, it has a data model that's source agnostic. So uh, it syncs data from any asset management or inventory tool like uh, CMDBs. It works with ASMs, it works with scanners of all types, and you can even bring in your pen test and audit results, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So any data that has to do with vulnerabilities and assets, you can bring that data into Nucleus uh, via a variety of means. So it um, doesn't matter. 
You know, if if it's vulnerability asset data, Nucleus will totally gobble it up and present it in a pretty way and make it actionable for you and your team. And as Aaron mentioned, the API really gives you unrestricted access to that data uh, to do with it as you please. It's uh, as I've joked around with Aaron before, it's like Burger King uh, with Nucleus. You can have your data your way. So, and I uh, I hope the King doesn't come after me for that uh, for using the, the brand name there because that guy's uh, kind of creepy. So, <laughs> is, is there anything I said there and that 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 doesn't line up with how you think about the platform? No. Yeah. Okay. The access yeah, to the data. Burger King guy's definitely creepy. And uh... <laughs> you agree with me on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also I, I think it, it's it's right to point out that oftentimes APIs are under strict lockdown for a lot of different systems. You know, it's it's not uncommon uh, to have an API that requires additional licensing. There's maybe heavy rate limiting or throttling on that API. So if you're getting data out, um, you have to be thoughtful about how often you're calling the API. Uh, and then also they might not expose bulk endpoints. And so you've got to call the API a thousand times if you're, you know, getting a thousand different data items, right? So right. Um, it, it can be really restrictive to use. And so the fact that we make it so open and easy to use and we don't rate limit or throttle it, it's provided with a Nucleus subscription is uh, really unique. And the kind of underlying motivation behind it was really to follow the the spirit of nucleus which is being an open data platform for vulnerability management data right right um yeah thanks for thanks for adding on there aaron and can you give us a real world example of the value customers get with the api maybe something from your own experience extensive experience in the api field yeah so actually i'm working with a customer right now where they've got a dozens of different systems that have different data. And some of those systems, you know, they're systems we have connectors for and we can easily get data from. Some of them are maybe spreadsheets or, you know, manual databases where they have kind of asset inventory data. And so what we've done is we've extracted data across all of those different systems, whether it's connector supported or especially if it's, you know, a, a custom file extract. And then we're able to map those to Nucleus through the API. Um, and so with that, we've actually created a seamless asset inventory of all of their vulnerability management data, right? All of the assets that they're managing for scans, they've got uh, robust information on all of it, right? And they're pulling all that information across a lot of different systems, which they wouldn't have been able to do if the platform weren't as open as it is. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's really that, it's really how we we allow customers to unlock the data once what's inside Nucleus and they can do uh, as they wish with it. Um, I know it can be leveraged across the platform in various ways to do a lot of the different sub processes of vulnerability management, like um, the various uh, the various workflows, processing assets and vulnerabilities as they come in, and also um, generating reports right based on. Um, various bits of metadata that come along with um, all the asset and vulnerability data. So uh, that's fantastic. So, um, you know, I think I think it's worth mentioning that this capability that Aaron just described is really about as fine grained as you can get in terms of being able to leverage all the data coming in from asset management and vuln scanning tools. So in this way, it really enables customers to get a lot more value out of their existing tools because of how it allows for the creation um, of a lot of set it and forget it type workflow automations and nucleus uh, saves huge amounts of time and effort uh, to do the process of do the hard process of managing vulnerabilities. So, um, you know, that set and forget it line, I believe, comes from the infomercial uh, from the rotisserie chicken uh, device, which Ron Popeil promoted. So hopefully they don't come after me as well. So, uh, <laughs> so Aaron. Um, would you please give the folks at home a brief demo of the API's capability capabilities in Nucleus? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let me share my screen. Great. Okay, great. I don't have to quit and reopen Chrome. 
Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would be disruptive. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is the Nucleus application, uh, the front end GUI that we see when we log in. And um, really all of the operations of this platform are exposed by API. So I can navigate to my API documentation here on the right. You can see view API docs. Um, I've already got it open um, and also authorized. You can get your authorization, uh, go here, user profile, and then I can copy, show my API key, provision API keys or rotate them, uh, and then copy and paste that into the authorized uh, window. So once you're authorized, you're ready to start uh, calling the API, right? So for example, I might wanna try out my API and get a list of all the projects that I have. All right, and I can see all of these different projects, right? Because uh, some of my subsequent calls, I might be using a project ID. So for example, if I wanna get a list of all of my assets on a project, then we'll try this out. And then it requires a project ID field. So if I go back up here, let's choose, I want to do Acme. Yeah, so let's do project two. All right, and then project two here, and then do get. And so here we can see my response body, 200, so success. And then this is a JSON uh, array or a JSON list that's returned. And I can see all of the different assets that I have in Nucleus. And so for example, if I wanna look at a specific asset and what vulnerabilities are on that system, I can see this very first one, you know, I've got four critical, eight high, 46 medium, 46 low, 156 informational. So we'll copy this asset ID, and then I can also query, let's actually roll this guy up because there's, this is what I was talking about with bulk endpoints, right? You right. can get all the data in one call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I might want to look at things like, uh, we'll do asset. Um, let's get information on a specific asset. So I'll try this guy out. And this is project ID two. And now I can see all of the uh, information on this asset, nice. right? So I can see asset groups. I can see asset info, right? Any metadata on that asset. We can also do things like look at findings or, um, you know, updating automations, uh, you know, getting information on connectors, risk or software. Um, another common use case is for reporting, right? And so we might be querying our uh, API endpoint to understand, you know, asset data, vulnerability data. Um, we also have an endpoint uh, that allows you to search for um, really any type of data within the platform. So let's do search. And then this gets information uh, that you can filter based on the input body. Right, so this is a post. Posts have uh, HTTP request bodies. It uses the JSON uh, data type for the input body. Uh, and then you can query by asset ID or asset groups, which could be you know, an array of uh, asset groups uh, by CVE number, you know, port, what have you. So let's try this guy out, project ID two. And then let's just do by asset ID. And it looks like that's not returning anything. Oh, that's because I did project ID. <laughs> there we go. All right, so now I'm getting lots of data, <laughs> right? Nice. Uh, so the search endpoint is a really common endpoint that folks use when plugging Nucleus into central dashboards, right? If you're using Tableau sure. or Power BI. Yeah. Um, I might want to query different aspects of my platform uh, and, and I can parameterize that query through that HTTP payload. Yeah. Right. Uh, that JSON message that I formatted in the beginning there. So it's very flexible. Uh, you can generate a query that, that really builds out a custom dashboard for you in something like Power BI or Tableau. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, nice. exactly. That's um, awesome. And yeah, so you you can you can build um, API integrations into Nucleus, calling the API. Um, you know, you can also build out uh, scripts that might post data to Nucleus. So, for example, we also have a uh, scan ingest. So we'll do scan. So we see this scan here. And this API endpoint is actually a really common endpoint that we use with the customer example that I gave, right? So that customer has dozens of systems with asset information. Um, they have systems that have uh, you know, scan data. Uh, and so we're posting some of that data through the API and doing it programmatically in an automatic, automatic way. Um, so this, this API endpoint is a really common endpoint that we use. Um, also, I should mention, you know, Tanium Connect. Uh, so Tanium is a really powerful tool that folks use for managing assets, managing scanning, and, you know, kind of vulnerability and compliance data. And uh, Tanium has this capability called Tanium Connect, where you can configure HTTP requests where we pass data to the API. And so that Tanium Connect module natively integrates into our API Right, um, allow, allowing you automatically post, you know, a push style integration versus us calling out to the API or what you might hear as a polling um, integration right. pattern. And so, essentially, in you know real time and scheduled, you know, pushing to Nucleus uh, via our API endpoint. Right, and at the at the time of this recording, we're actually. I think just a week away or so from releasing our Tanium connector that leverages yeah. that that feature. So, I know a lot of our larger enterprise customers are excited about that. So, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, I want to thank you for the demo, Aaron, and uh, I wanted to mention that uh, you know Aaron is from the the solutions engineering team, the sales engineering team, and I wanted to mention how hands on and collaborative uh, our 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 teams in those areas are uh, so much so that we've gotten phenomenal uh, unsolicited comments. We really do work. Uh, you know, a lot of companies will claim, you know, they have, uh, you know, they really partner with customers. But what, from what we've heard out there in the marketplace, a lot of times that's, um, you know, just lip service. So um, I want to say that that Aaron and Dave, who's on the show regularly, who who really help, uh, you know, guide customers into uh, implementing Nucleus, you know, they, uh, they're they committed to working closely uh, and collaboratively with customers to ensure they get up and running with nu Nucleus efficiency, uh, even if that means writing custom scripts and parsers for working with the API at scale. I know, I know both you and Dave do that, Aaron, on a regular basis. So um, before we wrap up this episode, Aaron, and in, in, in your view, uh, based on everything we talked about today, what's the most important thing uh, for folks to take away, you know, say there's an analyst or an engineer, um, either on the network side or the AppSec side, uh, they're starting to come around the idea of enhancing Nucleus with their, prog uh, their program with Nucleus. Uh, what would you say to them with regards to the benefits of implementing Nucleus uh, and being able to leverage its API capabilities? Yeah, and there's so many benefits. Um, you can imagine the API allows you to really unlock the platform. You can get any type of data into the platform, right? And so you're not just restricted on what we have connectors for. With that said, we do encourage new connector requests. Um, we're unique in that we enjoy building these connectors. Uh, it's uh, some, some view connectors as maybe a, a little bit, uh, um, you know, self-abusive to, to build those, <laughs> but we enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's um, a, I mean, it's a core competency for us too. I mean, because you know, at at the foundation, we're an aggregation platform. So um, to exactly. be able to get data in from other tools is is essential to what we do. And uh, in, in the lifetime of the company, we've been quite become quite competent at it. So it's yes. uh, we're continuously releasing new connectors based on customer requests. So uh, definitely, yeah. In my hats off to the engineering team. They're extremely responsive to building new connectors. Um, with that said, when we're in evaluations, there might be systems that you don't have a connector for yet, 
And so the API unlocks Nucleus, so that way you can easily get that data in. Right. Um, you can also get, it could be scan data, it could be asset inventory data. Um, also, the API is extremely powerful when it comes to reporting. That's another really, I think, key value area. While we have reporting within the platform, what we find are a lot of customers centralize data into a reporting tool, right? So you might have a single reporting tool that is looking at your vulnerability management program. It's looking at maybe risk uh, in, in other categories, like security events or you know, SOC team data. And so you have a centralized area that executives go to understand the health of an organization. Right. And so because we have the API built and exposing the platform in our data, uh, it allows you to feed that seamlessly and easily into your centralized dashboard. Um, and because it's a big data platform, it's really, really critical and key that we're not limiting the use of the, the API. Right. Um, it is your data in our perspective. Uh, and, and so being able to, to use it however you need to, to be successful, we support you with that. And the API supports you with that. Fantastic. Well, that's a wrap, Aaron. And thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we'll share any relevant links in the show notes, including how you can get a free trial or take a demo, et cetera. And uh, we'll see you soon on the next Nucleus Shortcuts. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. Thanks, y'all.